The sponsor of this episode is BetterHelp. Thanks for watching another episode of Ned's Declassified Podcast Survival Guide. We love you guys, and we want you all to know that your mental health matters. And we have some resources for you. My mental health has been a real big school project that I have been doing my whole life thus far. Mm -hmm. And I know that one of the keys to my mental health is communication, okay? When I haven't communicated or talked to people, I have ended up in some very precarious situations. So, finding people that I can trust to talk to, right? So first I found friends, then I made amends and found family, and then I needed a resource that was unbiased, had no stake in my success, could really just talk to me as who I was, not based on anything I was doing for them or who I was, just me and my problems, right? And getting that help put me back on earth, you know what I mean? It put me back um, in places that I wanted to be and I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah, keeping my mental health in check is kind of a constant thing and there are times where I don't even realize I, I'm, I'm losing it, like where I don't even realize I'm losing the balance and all of a sudden I look around and like, I, I can't do normal things, I can't pick up a phone call, I can't answer an email and I go, oh no, like I've gotten knotted up somewhere along the way and I need to call my therapist and figure out what happened so that I can keep, get present, keep moving forward, live the life that I deserve, uh, be there for my friends and family. Um, and sometimes it really does take me having a couple sessions with my therapist where we have to figure out like, what am I stuck on? What's the feeling that I'm denying? Mm -hmm. um, and having someone that I trust to get me there and get me through those moments has been essential to keeping my mental health in check. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are ready to start your therapy journey, BetterHelp. Yeah, yeah, we think you should try BetterHelp. They've made it convenient. Um, it's all online. And uh, Daniel, you ever going to start therapy? I need something that's all online, man. Yeah, I mean, that's BetterHelp. We've got a code for you. You yeah. got a code? What's the code? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you guys want to start your therapy journey, uh, please, you deserve to have your mental health be good. You deserve a good life. Uh, go to betterhelp.com slash declassified for 10% off your first month of therapy with a licensed professional specific to your needs. We're all gonna get through it together. Sometimes you just gotta ask for help. We're all oh. in this. No, I, missed, I missed the choreography. I missed We're all I, I didn't, in this together. I missed the choreography. I got a shout out to Reba. I have Reba. not been able to stop singing that, especially For when I carry around now. this elderly dog that I like babysit. <laughs> oh. And I'm just like I'm trying to do stuff with her and I have her in the papoose on me and I'm like, with gentle hands. And I'm <laughs> trying to do fucking dishes with her on my Bro. <laughs> Every time you just like randomly drop it into I mean, our any of our conversations, it brings me pure joy. Right? What a great like just like expression, release. Yeah. With gentle hands. Empowering. You yeah. Know? Oh, and also uh Reba, right? Like her show, um, Michelle Peterson was on Ned's and was on Reba. Yeah. Wow. We should call I just her made up. that connection. Wow. wow. And make her perform the theme song. That's wild. I'm a survivor. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let's all right, get right. to the Podcast actual good yes. Yes. shit yes. of hey, today. Hey, guys. Yes, hey. what's today about, Lindsay? Today, we have one of my all-time favorite cuddly little bear people <laughs> who is also a fellow Taurus who have gotten the pleasure to work with and hey. get to know. That is Chris Zilka. Hey, Chris welcome, welcome, Chris. Zilka. Hi, Chris. Chris. Howdy, y'all. Um, wait, so what did you guys work together on? So we worked together. Go, go ahead. I'm going to stop. Oh, oh, let him do it. We worked together on 10 Things I Hate About You, which I, like, for the first time in a long time, reminisced about all day today and, like, was like, <laughs> Gil Younger, Carter Covington, like I miss all of them. Oh, and wow. uh, Stephanie Leader, how about like, she then I got to work with Mimi on The Leftovers, which was like a gift. And I didn't realize that they were related. Really? Um, yeah, and then we did, what movie did we do with Gil? Teen Spirit? <laughs> Teen yeah. spirit. I haven't seen that. What's that about? I'm going to yeah. be honest with you, Chris. So that was a super fun shoot, but that was weird behind the scenes for you and I, eh? Oh my God. Eh? Eh? Hey. 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 Why was it weird? Yeah. Hey. Um. Okay. So I had a little crush on Chris. Okay. 
I mean, look at him. Yeah. We Handsome. had like gone out to the club like the night or like the <laughs> like the week before that we were gonna fly out to North Carolina and got a little arm like a little bit of our Mac on, right? And then you get then you then you got high like got booked for Teen Spirit. And I was like, oh my gosh, great. We're going to be in North Carolina, like blah, 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 in the same hotel. And like the vibe just like wasn't like that when we got back together. But this one night <laughs> with the aid of some Ambien and the condom from the hotel desk manager's wallet. Okay. I, remember I just remember face. going down and being like, we need it. <laughs> going down. And he goes, I have one in my wallet. It's my personal condom. Yep. So he gave us his personal condom. Chris, but do you remember like, any just of this? See, just like at, at like at like midnight, twelve thirty. Like if you if if I could be like a fly on the wall, or even worse, like a guest walking into the hotel, really? and me and Lindsay are like propped up on like the like like talking to the concierge, like. So can we have it? So <laughs> I was like, I need it. Like going in and out of Ambien. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so that's when I like black out for the night, right? We, the next morning I wake up with no clothes on, right? And so I'm like, what? And then Chris, Chris was up and had been to the gym already. So he comes in the door and he's like, it's time for set. And I like, remember I was acting like a bitch the rest of the day. A, because I didn't remember it. And B, because... I don't know, like maybe it wasn't the reaction I was like hoping for from you or something. <laughs> but I remember I was just like crushed. And then like we are just best friends. You know what I mean? Like that's what you've always, always been to me. And I love you. And I that, know. That is enough. And like, you know like, what I mean? But that extra thing would have been like fun to explore. But it's it's always been so enough with you. Oh my God, exactly. And same, same with me. And I had feelings too. I caught like major feelings, just was like so terrified at yeah. the time. Like, you know, um, um, but it's like really been wonderful. Like even, even this morning, like kind of prepping myself mentally for this, because like, I'm so like, I could never do acting. Like I did act in class, but like live shit, like I'm terrified oh, yeah. to do. Like wow. if a camera's in front of me, I could be, I'm in heaven. No pressure on the but, like pod. doing like doing the, a live podcast is even like, like I, I looked at my stepmom this morning. I was like, I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> no. Like I'm so nervous. And she's like, you have nothing to be nervous about. Your brother and sister know about the podcast, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, even better, guys!" Wow. But like, but like, it's just been a joy. Um, like, as friendships, like I spent 20 years in LA, and I think you, uh, probably Jordan and Katie Welch, are like the only three friends I re like real friends that I have. Mm. Um. To be a hundred percent honest, like yeah. it's just like like it's so far and few between, and and like just the, like I go I go I'll go back to Ohio, and my mom still asks like about you, and like also and also like the dog that you Gypsy, yes. he's the one who gave me Gypsy. Oh what? no way! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, holy shit! He he knew that I wanted a wiener dog so bad, mm -hmm. and like this little wiener. Gypsy showed up on your family's porch, right? With your wiener dog, right? Yes, in and Ohio, yeah. He road tripped the dog out to me. No way, dude. Yeah. That's wild. And I guess yeah. maybe from like a puppy mill or something, because Gypsy was pedigree, but he was like in a little bit of bad shape when, when you found him. Right. Right. All yeah. All wieners something. are in bad shape, aren't they? Hey, <laughs> hey. And then like, also like ba back to like what you said in the opening, like the tourist thing, like, May 1st, Nicholas Braun. May, May 10th, 9th, Lindsay my Shaw. Main, my main man. Like, I, it's, oh my like, you two are the only two people that, like, I think of more than myself. Oh, yeah, May 17th. May, May 17th. 17th. We got yeah. Taurus all yes. around, baby. All around. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember the one joint birthday party that we like threw together because his birthday is the ninth, mine is the tenth. Yeah, right. So we, I got like, oh my this god, mansion or Gigi whatever this was at at my friend's mansion. <laughs> there was every substance known to man here, and I had already been up for two days. Oh damn! Right, and it was. I mean, okay, I, Chris and I were pretty 
liberal with our use of substances. I feel <laughs> like um, we super liberal, super liberal, <laughs> right? We we were like, Do you know what I thought of? I I also thought of today. <laughs> Do you remember one of those liberal experiences? You, me, and Gigi went out, and then at like three o'clock in the morning, I get a call from like a production and is like, hey, we're moving our day. Um, you're actually due on set at 6 a.m. I was like, Whoa. it was the first and last time. I've ever like done anything like that. Like things like that. Like it was such a huge wake up call and thank God the day wasn't too heavy. Right. Dang. Right. But it Holy was heavy shit. for me. I remember going like me and Gigi are like driving. I'm like, you got to go with me. She's like, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and, and it's like, do you though? And like, so we're driving to set and like, I get there and, and like, I just remember like, all of a sudden, like when I finally got to lunch on set, I went back to my trailer and she's laying in the bed sleeping, obviously. And like, there's like a, like a, like a, like a biblical, biblical proportion of like fruits and vegetables from crafty. Like every chance I had, I brought her like something. <gasps> oh, <laughs> how, how was the footage from that shoot day? Like, did you like your performance? <laughs> It's oddly, oddly, it was pretty good. He's but like, like, it was I my best work. Like <laughs> it's the best scene I've ever done. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The only good work I'm proud of. Wow. <laughs> no, Chris, I feel yeah. like has this like ability, you know, in front of the camera to like, he brings his whole open heart. And while I think sometimes that can be difficult for you in your personal life, just that big open heart, which I, you know, yeah. I feel too. Um, you just bring that to set every time. I don't think there's like a way for you not to be able to be dropped in, right? Because you live yeah. this like very authentic, yeah. authentic. Even it's why up I've all been night. engaged four times, and the only time I'm actually happy is when I'm working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me about like this time. When did you leave LA? Why did you leave LA? Well, I first left LA and like right before COVID started, and ended up being there during COVID and ended up, you know, taking care of my family and, and then like kind of realized like maybe I'm a lot more simple than I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Like I really like to work, but I really, really like fan. And I missed like, I missed a lot of time. I left home when I was 19 and like never went back. Like I never went back. I kind of like, um, like lost touch with family and stuff like that. And then like now what it's 2023 now, three years after that, I'm reconnecting with my other family, like my father and my stepmother and, uh, my brother and sister, the, my youngest, like Th they're twins. Tommy? That is no, younger than that. Younger than Tommy. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay and Dalton. Like Lindsay's getting married in February. She works for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No, like, go girl. My dad, my dad actually got some one of his kids to be a professional football player, and it's not like me. Bruh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, not you, emotional yeah, and Dalton actor. Serves in, <laughs> Dalton serves in the Navy, wow. and Dalton serves in the Navy. So mm. like, it's like just like I'm almost content with my personal life to like be like. I feel like as well-rounded as I want to be as a human. Like, I don't think I'm not sure if I'll ever get married would love to, or at least have a partner. And then like, would really love kids, but not sure that's going to happen. Like I've like had a lot of fun and worked like through my twenties enough to where I couldn't really establish relationships or mm -hmm. like tried to, but you know, you were busy. Um, yeah. But I'm like super content and happy with like today. And I feel like I'm almost like full as a person not behind the camera, mm. if that makes sense, or not in front of the camera. Like I'm almost there and like I don't wake up depressed. I don't have like bipolar issues or like, like you know, the typical, yeah. you know, more than most, yeah. like all of my mental health issues. And, uh, and it, it feels really good. It feels really good. Like almost there. 
Yeah. Almost there. Yeah. Do you do you miss the smog? Or, or is the Ohio? Do I miss the smog? the smog? I was actually there last weekend. I texted like, <laughs> dude, you know I would have helped you move, by the way. Yeah. I would never <laughs> ask you to do That's that. That's a your... real friend. friend. Real friend. Neither of these fuckers. He delivered a that wiener that dog to her. <laughs> <laughs> delivered her, you know, her favorite you know dog <laughs> and offered feel, to help her move. I feel really disappointed yeah. I didn't get a chance to see you because like. No, that, absolutely that not. Lovely. I'll be back. That's one. Good. That's the great thing about L.A. Like, yeah. like when you when you're when you haven't been there for a long time, when you do get there, it's like, oh, man, mm -hmm. like. Yeah. And, and I told I told my parents that as soon as I got back, I like my stepmother asked me, like, hey, how did it feel to be in L.A.? And I was like. Home. Mm, yeah. I spent over half my life living there, and yeah. it's kind of like one of the only things I have that no one else has mm. in my family and in like my circles now. It's like something that like I can't explain to people, but like it felt like home, like driving from the airport and being like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really going uh, anywhere. I know? love the smog. LA I love here. the shit. Like, I love all this. <laughs> like, this is like home. Like, I, I love it. I was going to go to... Dylan and I were, were shooting a short, like, Dylan's our approved, producer. thank God, during the strike. And, like, I... Like I was gonna go to a Seven Eleven across the street from the hotel that I was staying at when I got home from from set, and like I I have this app called Citizen. Oh yeah, and yeah, and and it's like don't have Citizen. actually. There's an armed robbery yeah. at that Seven Eleven. I was like, damn, it's hard to I have. To, I no, prefer to be surprised. No, you can't you can't have that app. I had that app for <laughs> for like three weeks, and just the texts I was getting while I it was during the pandemic. I wasn't leaving a my murder, house. A murder, a stabbing. Yeah. <laughs> Someone stabbed three blocks away. Yes. Someone murdered three blocks it's away. Like, Would you like There's an players. alligator on your street. I was like, fuck Clutching this app. Pearls. Fuck God, this app. Wow. Yeah, it's gnarly. And it like knows where you are. Like it's like a pretty, pretty crazy app. Like yeah, I'm yeah, in Tampa. I'm in Dunedin, Florida now. And like, like I'll go up to my parents like once every couple weeks and just be like, hey, like another sexual offender just moved in 500 feet away. Let's go find this fucker. Like, it's hey. like weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big vigilante. He's going yeah, to be beating he people. Chris is like, the real reason is <laughs> yeah. I work as a superhero. I'm really satisfied <laughs> being out of Los Angeles, stopping crime on my yeah. own in the, in the night. Yeah, right? <laughs> I am Batman. Yes. yes. <laughs> may, may I ask you about something, a time in your life that I don't know a lot about, and it is your time with Paris Hilton. Yes. If you don't want the to talk about that, you can I'm, say, fuck you. The and first utter. time I'll ever, well, I feel comfortable saying, uh, talking about it with you. Um, you know, it, it was, uh, well, a common misconception uh, involving Paris and every relationship she has with like just people or love life and stuff like that is what a wonderful human being she is mm -hmm. and just like full of love and full of effort and full of like work like she's non-stop 24 hours a day and i look back at a lot of um relationships since i have had so many and i cannot tell you one bad thing about paris like that was all me and the fact that she's like happy now or seems happy now and like has a baby mm. and her career is booming even more. Like, it's just like, it just warms my heart more than anything. Um, it was a great time, uh, but like not being able or like, you know, like acting wasn't a choice for me during that time, mm. um, which I completely understood because of like the you know, like just things she had been through in her life and in her personal life. And um, it's one thing that I actually couldn't live without. I couldn't live without, like I can't live without performance art. And like, I even did art exhibitions and did like a, an exhibition uh, in Ibiza and like had successful art shows but like you know i love painting um i never thought of that as a job or like selling it like i sell them but like 
Um, it, it was a huge wake up call that performance art is like super important to me yeah. and like the camaraderie and the family that you grow on each and every set. Yeah. Like it, it does, it does like the one thing that sucks is like every time you're on any set, it's like, Hey, we're going to stay in touch. And you kind of never do. Never. You kind of never do, but you learn you. that th you learn that it's okay. And like just that time that you spent together, I think that's why I love TV so much. Like we got a year together on 10 things. Like the leftovers was like six years. Thank you, wow. HBO hiatuses. Wow. Um, like, like it's like, it's like really wonderful just to have that experience. But on Paris, like I've never been able to apologize to her for all, like just like, not being grateful for the experience and like all that she did for me because mm -hmm. like she's the one relationship that I've ever had that there was no take mm -hmm. it was all give mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. it was all give oh, babe. and and, you, and it, it was really lovely and and you're saying that's why it dissolved is like your your work was, was yeah my was my work everything. was just like really important to me and it was at a time and I obviously I chose her yeah. over work. Um, and like, I don't regret it. it. It was at like the peak of my career. Like mm. we were going into the final season, season of the leftovers. Mm. And then, you know, my time with her, like I didn't work, which mm. was like two, three years. And, uh, but like, the overall experiences and the, just the people, the people that you would meet, like just such lovely people. I miss her family. Oh. Like I miss her family. Like I miss her mom and dad and her brother and sister or mm. brothers and sister. Like yeah. I miss, like I miss that. I miss yeah. driving from like her house to Bel Air yeah. to like hang out with them. Like, like it's, you, it's, I'm, I'm not supposed to say anything because obviously like I, I is when we did finalize everything and break up, I know about past breakups with her. So I did like sign an NDA saying that I won't write a book or like yeah, say anything yeah. like that. But there was really never anything negative that I could say. Mm. I'm so well, Glad that you got that experience to be yeah. given too, though, because you are such a giver to the point that, like, I, th I think your receive valve was almost like a little off. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you just yeah. like receiving all of that love that you put out and just actually getting a chance to feel that and have that reflected back at you and be taken care of. Because, like, yeah. just forever, you've taken care of your family. You always take care of the girls you're with. You always just take care of the crowd um, of people that are out and, you know, you you really are like this um this awesome rock you know what I mean and so I'm ah, just thank glad you. That you got to be like I feel the same way about you <laughs> <laughs> dang I feel the same way about you I guess that's why we've had so many emotional conversations oh with each other. oh my gosh the amount so of nights we just sat up just chain smoking and like <laughs> d diving, diving into, into each into other's the depths. souls yeah, yeah exactly yeah but you yeah. know what was weird yeah. on Teen Spirit man is that I felt this. Like, like you were so isolated, even when we were together. Yeah. Like, I remember hanging out with you on a day off and we hung out like the whole day and we went like by this lake, we walked around and I was just like, mm, it, it hurts my heart that I feel like, like, you know, there, there, there's nothing I can do to really reach you in a way that's going to make you feel good or better or lighter. You just had this little like heaviness about you and that like, it broke my heart and it, like makes me so glad that you're getting to experience like the simple perfect thing that you are you know because you are oh my really god complex. like it, it is really nice like dealing with dealing with a lot of past traumas and like mental health and like not blaming it on today or yesterday mm -hmm. like like getting over all that trauma or just like just not pointing the finger at anything it's mm -hmm. like I and like people if if we weren't on a podcast like people that come up to me because it happens really quite often 
is people bring up Paris and it's just like, I have nothing bad to say. And anyone that does have anything bad to say about her is probably a bad person. <laughs> Dude, mm. yo, I, I live streamed an event and got to hang with her at the White House. My, my girl, Chantel, actually introduced me to her. Uh, she works for this like child welfare organization. Uh, Think of us. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know Paris Hilton had a, a kind of rough uh, upbringing with like boarding schools and stuff like that. So oh my she's gosh. Huge yes. Advocate. And she would, she would open up to me about that. And I was like, nah, no way. There's but no, no she's, way. She's out like, there. My, my never girl know. was a former foster youth as well. And I mean, she's doing a lot uh, at the White House and with so many different organizations. And I, I'm, wow. my hat's off to her because I didn't know that. Mm. I knew she was going to be DJing the event. And I actually enjoyed the DJing. Have you seen Hell her yeah. DJ live? Oh, my God. Like, we you... used to DJ together. Together. Yeah. Hey. Like, it was <laughs> awesome. Like, like, that's like, that's like one of the things that like, like, like just one of a million experiences. It was like, yeah, we had a residency at Amnesia in Ibiza for three oh, years that we were together. That's insane. Every yeah. Sunday night. Hey, bro, you yeah. lived an amazing life. And it, and it was like a yeah. diamond party. Like, like, it was dope. That's insane. Like, the, like wow. That's so wild. cool. And, like, you learn, like, something that was really cool, like as, a, like, as a performer, like, as an actor, like, I'm just an actor. Uh, like, like you get what rock stars feel because that like immediate feedback tens of thousands, right? pe- tens of yes. thousands of people will be up there and like they're there for her but and she's a good dj she too. was solid like, she, her dope. set she killed that set man like she's really good and like just to feel the love and it's just like you two being up there like i was i would just like dan- i was like her like hype man i remember like yeah like i remember like watching like videos of Kurt Cobain because I just love all of his art and like Nirvana would have like this hype guy that would get up and just like dance like a crazy person and that was me for Paris basically (laughs) that's dope bro so are you still DJing no 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 just doubt okay gotcha gotcha yeah would love to get back into that. Yeah, it's and like, you and Daniel just... worked together too. You guys were on he, Zeke and Luther. He was a bully yeah. of us. Zeke and Luther. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. were the bully on Zeke and Luther. I, I was a bully, and oh. he bullied the bully. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, the Plunks, the Plunk brothers. Yeah, <laughs> we and so in that. <laughs> his brother or sidekick was Reed. Oh yeah, Reed. Reed, Reed Ewing. Ewing. Yeah, Reed Ewing. Reed Ewing. You Reed keep in Ewing. T- yes. You, you keep in <laughs> touch with him. I haven't talked to him in years, oh, but you. like I have like a soft spot because Same. Reed was like the first like because I was brand new during Zeke and Luther, like oh. brand new. It was before ten things, yeah. mm. like before anything, mm. and like I felt like it was really cool because I had like a partner, mm. like. Yeah having this like duo of bad guys like it was so much easier than just being like flying solo and being the you bad guys work guy. so well together Dude. too and now i'm always the bad guy <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because you're such like a sweet man clearly i love that you're <laughs> the thing you always play is the the heavy the the antagonist <laughs> But yeah, it is dope having like partners in a, like we know it with our little trio, our bullies on set, like we're a particular bond because they would always work together. Like that's like a special thing. Yeah. 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 Heck, it really is. Like, and I miss having an ensemble. I miss having an ensemble of the same age. There's something where that, that, that like, that's really special too. Like Definitely. being of the same generation, like it's cool to have an ensemble with like big actors and actresses that are older and younger, but like having the camaraderie of like, even like just being on set, like offset yes. on your, at your trailer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, y- Hey, dude, did you get lunch yet? No, it looks nasty today. You uh-huh. want to order something? Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you steal gas from the studio? Yep. Wow. <laughs> Water cooler talk. Yeah, huh? I mean, definitely all being of the same generation is a special thing because, like, you're filming together, but you also have all the same, like, cultural references. And, like, yeah, we have that yeah, with our Neds cast. Yeah. It's just, like, we're all the same generation. <laughs> yeah, and there's something lovely about it. And, like, that's why it's so nice, like, Like, it, like, warmed my heart today when my stepmom was like, oh, my God, like, the twins, like, know that podcast. And I was like, hey, these three are, like, friends, even though we've never met, like, you two, like, like, it's like, I, I 
I listen to everything on, <laughs> on Instagram and like the podcast and like yeah. yeah. Wait. I go through like my bouts of like Lindsay being a Lindsay fanatic, and like, uh, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't we all, uh, dude? Yeah. Hutch Dano, have you been in touch with Hutch? I have been in touch. I actually talked talked to Hutch like four or five months ago. Cool. Yeah, doing super super well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing his thing. Doing super well. Yeah, because you know he struggled a little bit, and like Not now his bit. life is just <laughs> a lot of bit, a, a lot, lot of, of bit, a lot of bit. Hutch struggled a lot of bit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to speak for anyone. Yeah, no, no, he was on the pod. It's, 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 it's already pod. context oh, on the pod. Yeah, I love Chris. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 We kind of went through all that at the same time. Mm. Like getting all sober. of us did, yeah. and I feel like every one of our generation kind of went through something like that. Mm. Yeah, and it was just so, always such a secret that it it felt like uh, it was like it was like a like a dark cloud moving. Instead of like people like it's really wonderful about today's generation, like like right below us that like they're so open about everything and all this. There's a there's a bright side to every new trend or new thing happening Mm. and whether or not it's culturally or in the media. And I think one of the lovely things is uh, the power of like people's voices and the acceptance of people's voices nowadays because i don't know if we were all like if our generation was all that like quiet about it just no one was listening Ooh. and like now people are listening and it's really nice because like we we like Lindsay, especially like i remember us wearing our heart on our sleeve and like didn't care who was in the room and like just talked about problems and like things that we're doing and substance abuse and alcohol and like all this stuff. And like, it's just like, no one really listened to our generation. We Mm. weren't, we weren't um, as demanding as the new generation. And it's kind of nice to see. It's like, we were like that right go between. between. Yeah. Mental, mental health hadn't quite been put at the forefront and quite as such a like priority yeah. As it is right. now, uh, which I agree, man, it's such a good thing. And, and we're the three of us have just grown to be like, you know, just <laughs> unfiltered, open, especially on this <laughs> yeah. podcast. I think yeah. I think probably you and I more, Lindsay, <laughs> had become already this open or you always have been. I became this open before the podcast and then on the podcast. Now it's just. <laughs> now we're all here. We, have, we can't not with talk the goal about of things. helping people, you know. Yeah, but, and just being real about life. Man. Yeah, facts. But going going off that, Chris, like Daniel was like, so what is he like? And I'm like, he's like me. And so, <laughs> have you found that maybe part of your motto going forward? This is what I have found: is that it is like I could put the heart away a little bit. Like it doesn't <laughs> always have to be bleeding right there on the sleeve, right? I have become like, and it's only happened over the past like four or five years. Like I've really learned to like use all the tools I've learned in therapies and at rehabs and stuff like that. And like, just like, just kind of actually using them. And like, I can put like the heart on hold and like, it makes me, I'm a server. Like I like to serve people. I like to, I like to be of service Mm -hmm. and to touch on like what you're saying. Like, I I think I was really selfish at the time. I think I was really selfish at the time. And I have learned to like not bleed all over the place. Right. Like when you're in, I have a pack of band-aids in my pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. Like not literally. That'd be pretty funny. But (laughs) yeah, you know, it, it's like, yeah, you don't have to bleed all over the floor or all over everybody. But I think when you're in that much pain, like you can't, at least I, I was in so much pain. I wasn't even aware of really what I was doing. I was like, I'm serving all these people when really it was just so Mm self-serving. So I Yeah. It kind of reminds me of what Gil would always tell us on set and it, when he would just, he would just say it very subtly, but he would make sure you heard it. And he'd be like, nail yourself to the floor. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's like, oh, yep. shit. And like, I've, that's stuck with me for the past, Oof. what, we shot that show 15, 15 years ago. ago. Yeah. Be like, still. Gil, that, Gil be still. was the director of the movie. 
10 things I hate about you. Oh. Right? And so he came in as a consultant and out of the 20, he directed 10 episodes oh, of that wow. show, right? Yeah. And he's actually the reason that I got into teen spirit. And he, I would say, was absolutely my comedy mentor. Mm. Like, we had such yes. a shorthand even behind, when he was behind the camera and I was in front of the camera, he would yell me a note and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it would kind of like come together. Um, I, I love that guy. Your guys' cast in that show was was great. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah, what happened to 10 Things I Hate About You? So my recollection of 10 Things is that we were on a great time slot for the summer, right? And then we got moved to like spring like programming and we were up against like Monday Night Football and like oh. we were up against just an impossible time slot. Mm. I feel like also um, subject matter at that point in time for teen comedies and teen dramas were kind of pushing the envelope a little more than we were right right we were more of a light comedy yeah, yeah. and and like people that watched it loved it that's what right. i'm saying i know that uh but like at the time you were getting more into like pretty little liars yeah. being on abc family yeah, and Lindsay. it's like i had to trade over to that real quick <laughs> there's teachers and fucking there's teachers and like students hooking up in that we didn't really touch nope. on like nope <laughs> right, nope. gossip yeah, girl. Yeah, we, we were like, like a little yeah. more old school. I feel, and I feel like that was just like the times. Like, right, what a cat's we biggest. We just issue. missed like being like family awesome. matters yeah. right, or like right, right, right. house. Like we just yeah. missed that. Yeah, yeah. Cat's biggest issue was like making sure everybody recycled and saving the naked mole rats and yeah, exactly. All of that. Like, and very... like if if Ethan and I took our shirts off, it was like ooh, <gasps> sexy episode. Wow. <laughs> So funny. And then Game of Thrones came along and there were just cocks in every episode. Right. God damn. God yeah, damn. right? There's like people being murdered. Like the show was about someone getting murdered. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're just happy to have the same dad for 10 Things I <laughs> yeah. About You, oh my the gosh. director. Larry like, Miller. Larry oh. Miller came on. And what a just to have that much enthusiasm for the craft still working with these new people. I, that's all I want. You know? All I he was that. so much fun. Yeah, he was so much fun and really easy to work with. Because I, like I was still so new, and it was like I, like I grew up in Ohio. Like I, like I, like the nutty professor. Like this, like legend. <laughs> and like now we're in a living room scene, and I like I, he walks in on me without my shirt on. Like, <laughs> yo, how all many other weird... like comedy roles have you played? Because you were funny in 10 Things I Be Hate About You and also in Teen Spirit playing that like jockey thing. I think you have this very funny bone, but have you gotten to express it a lot? Zeke and Luther too. No. Yeah, that's, yeah. it was the beginning of my career. Like yeah. right, basically right after 10 Things, I went into the indie verse mm -hmm. and like did like and the Spider -verse. Kaboom and like Dixieland, like all these like dark movies. And it kind of put me into this place where uh, I haven't done comedy since. Wow. Well, you yeah. know what? They are sleeping on you and we got to dust that off because you mm -hmm. are one of the funniest like ditzes. But also I know like there's more to your stuff. But like when you can play a believable just like uh -huh. like he's like, dude, he was like Seth Powers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, on yeah, 10 yeah, things? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Nothing in there, like, very beautiful. I, I, <laughs> exactly. Like Porsche. honestly, like I miss Joey Donner. Like a lot. I yeah, that was his yeah. Like a lot. Like yeah. I miss that character like a lot. He was more more than like I mean, people would say like he's stupid and stuff like that, but I just thought he would like loved everyone. <laughs> I thought he was same. very innocent. He just loved everyone. You yeah, brought to, this innocence. Well, to you as the actor, he can't yeah. be stupid. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You know, that's not how it works. Yeah, to play yeah, a character like that, no, you don't yeah. go, I'm stupid. You have to find some other way of living, which yours, I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's just, no, and like comedy is just everybody. like playing the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comedy is just like playing the bad guy. Like you have to look at, like, you gotta justify. Not, like, how evil can you be or how bad you can be? It's how likable can I make this? Humanize. Wow. Yeah, you have to yeah. humanize that character for sure. Yeah. What yeah. is my point of view that I am this way? Like, right. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Can't believe yeah. we've never worked together. What the hell, man? He would flash that smile just like, and it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> right? It was just the best. That smile right there. <laughs> <laughs> to be young again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> man.
No, and, not and at all. And you were the Julia Stiles character, right? I was the Julia Stiles character. We did not have much who interaction. Was, who was the Heath? Um, Ethan Peck. He's doing great. I mean, what a character. He's playing Spock. Like, I mean, incredible. freaking wonderful. Wait, you went, to, you went to Oregon after the pandemic? Or when, when was this about? Or I went, pandemic? so I went from Ohio, in Ohio from the pandemic till it was over. Oh. Okay. And then back to L.A., for like, and we saw each other, mm-hmm. Lens. That's yeah. when like I found out you were hanging out with Katie and Jordan yeah. and all those guys, and it yeah. was like, oh, that yeah. couldn't have worked out more perfect. Like, like Lindsay's so safe. I, like the best people in LA yeah. are that is that group of yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Like totally. in my opinion. Yep. Um, and then I met a girl, and she lived in Portland, and like I moved up to Portland, and uh, kind of like. Had this roller coaster journey with myself, like physically, and I started running marathons. I saw and, that like, on your IG. Yeah, and like was really good at it, like Wait, really I good. Thought you said that that she, she was like not not cool for a second. Like like my health was good, and my mental health was good, and my physical health was good, but there was also one thing driving me completely insane, and like actually insane, like. Mm. Me- like medication insane yeah, and you, you know people do that to you uh it wasn't like she was doing it on purpose of we course just but can i also be. say like above any addiction I, that i think you have or have worked through or participated in, in the past love love is your biggest addiction my heart dude you it's love bad her. Like, I mean, it's every, so bad and I'll a, never give it up. A serial dater, dude. <laughs> he is in relationships for years, like riding for that chick. Like, I mean, yes. and, and every other second I turn around and you're like in the arms of somebody else. And it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. Cause I know like you're giving them so much. And like, that's really your natural state of being is that like lover caretaker yeah. energy, you know? So yeah. I can totally understand yeah. that, you know? And I know you leave people better than you found them. Hey, that part. Yes. Well, that's not. That's that's a really great compliment. Thank you. Mm. I I think I do as well. And also, like, I never. Um, uh, if I could go back, I would. They. I would. I would hope for them to not be so public. Mm. The pu- the public part of it, like, it's like that's hard. I I, w- I wouldn't mind like switching that the public persona in my dating life with like my work life more Mm -hmm. like it'd be fine. It's fine. Like that it's to, to like, we're prepared for that as actors. Like we're prepared for that pub publicity. And like, I think there's a certain way to deal with that. And, and it's nice because it's still not, if you're, uh, in the public as an actor, like, it's like, well, yeah, that was a great role, but that's not me. (laughs) Right. And And it's it's like, but like when you're like, I mean, it started with Lucy in 20. Oh, damn. 12. Yeah. In 2012 and just ended in 2018, 2019 with Paris. And it's like, yeah, it's like, I went through a decade of public relationships and kind of like awful relationships oh my are God. hard enough it was terrible. Like working out the intimate private personal relationship that's plenty yeah stack a fucking yeah. public eye and opinion on it no In- yeah, fucking this way Instagram, yeah. social media crap I, I really hate it yeah i really hate it for relationships I hate yeah it. thank god it, it was always like oh that's so cute for me like it was never like ah oh, they right. wrecked their car and yeah. had an eight ball on them Wait, like, did you guys see never this? like anything like that did you guys see this tiktok that went viral like in the last few weeks of like this fucking love surge shit. Did you see this? Love surge? All right. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, he's having a love surge. Yeah, there's this couple that is like, <laughs> listen, they're so in love and so lovely, but they've invited the public into their love. Demonstrate on me. Demonstrate. And, Demonstrate. And yeah, she's like, okay, I'm going to share with you that something that my husband does. My husband's having a love surge right Ooh, now. He's and having, he's, he's, he's having standing a love behind surge. her shaking. And they do this like, like, huh, and so he's gonna hug me, and we're just gonna explode. And it's just like, like, hey guys, go take your clothes off, go in the bedroom, <laughs> yep. or do it right there. Yeah, you're like, ruining the oh. moment, trying to put but it all on TikTok. Yes, in, in his pants. Right 
My husband's Damn. having a love surge. Oh! Damn, Damn it, not again. <laughs> um, but but for me, that was like an example of like, and then she posted a video crying because they got like roasted for that video. And I'm just like, don't invite <laughs> TikTok into your fucking love like yeah, this. Yeah, he could have just had the love surge. You finish them off and you never have to cry. <laughs> there you go. There you that? go. <laughs> Keep it simple. Um, so funny, man. Can I just, um, lastly, before we give the tip and go, was it crazy after Paris, like all the publicity that you got? Like, did you get called? Like, was it? Did you yeah. have to run from TMZ? Yeah, but, you know, I have a, I have a great knack for disappearing. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. That's like a grand testament to like all of my friends and all of and my family. Like I, I can hide out for like a lot. Like, I mean, I'm basically still, I'm just now like stopping. Like this is really the first public thing that I've done since then. Glad to have you. Like, this is basically the first thing public because like, I'm ready. I'm ready to be back. I'm ready to be on set again. Yeah, I'm ready to oh, like, let's go. You know, like not not so much tell my story, but like start my new story. Yeah, start your new and narrative. and that that's like a really hard thing to do yes, is. is to uh, close one book and like start writing another one. Yep, especially like, one that kind of left you no room for a for an epilogue or a sequel or nothing, right? Dang. We, we kind of just had nothing, to, right? That that was done. Yeah. <laughs> What's nice is it it might not have been. Like my happy ending might not have happened, but hers seemed to, mm. and that's so lovely oh, wow. to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you're like getting to the new place to start your new kind of book. Um, I think yeah. we, we've all gone through an aspect of that, growing up in the industry, going through whatever the fuck we went through in our twenties, going through the fucking whirlwind of. How, what's my identity with this? How much do I prioritize it? Fuck, for a time, I just need to prioritize the simplicity of my being and getting myself good. And now we're all kind of starting this new book in the last year with this podcast, mm-hmm. among other things. This is a first book. Yeah, and seen. just like, and each and yeah. each one of you like seem like so much happier with yourself. Hey. And, we and like we say it, we've been book, saying yeah. it for years, like getting high together or being fucked up together. We'd just be like, I just want to be happy. And it's like, all right. So why are you repeating this ins- yes, right. insanity right. Right. every week and yeah. every day? And like, and like we just I feel like all of us of our generation of actors, like we're all uh, coming back. Yes. yes. Yeah, dude. We're all coming back. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool because now we're like adults. And now we can and choose it. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. We, I can handle it now. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's really nice. I'm, we survived, I'm, basically. I'm, In my opinion, like we survived. Yeah. Like and, and it, it was like going to war. Not <laughs> no, literally, really, but though. you know. Dude, like, it was the hunger games. Soul yeah. war. It was the yeah. hunger <laughs> games, dude. <laughs> Dude. Reading that book, I was like, wait, this is me. And all, all my friends, I would attach Katniss. them to different characters. I'm Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> yeah. I, and what's cool, what's cool about our generation of like actors so is like good. we all celebrate each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I feel like we're the first generation that actually does that. Like it's not like all competition and shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like, really our am parents tried to ingrain like, that, but it's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're away from it. Chris, can I just tell you how happy I am to see you this happy? I went through this exact, like, I'm going through and I'm in the process and I know exactly what you mean and, like, how you feel just, like, cleansing yourself and and making the space to feel how you deserve to feel and how, you know, and wanting to feel better, right? Yeah. And it's, like, a testament to, like, the one relationship that I, like, put off for so long was my stepmother and my father. Mm. And, like, now that I'm with them and, like, like they're they're just like the greatest support system mm. ever and like my only job is to be healthy mm. like yeah it's beautiful beautiful and that's nice. all they want <laughs> it's yeah. like really cool right awesome. like all you want is me to be healthy like cool that's, well, that's not pretty a, that, awesome that's like, not what that's i thought i had to do to yeah. earn like life yeah. respect love yeah just be <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, Chris, awesome, all right. Man. We Thanks for coming got to wrap on. Up. Yeah, thank you, dude. But will you please give a tip to the audience in Ned's fashion? Just whatever you want to say. Yeah, we'd like to leave them with a little tip, a little life tip. Uh, keep your naivete because eventually 
the light bulb will go off. Yeah. So stay naive as long as you can. Stay young for as long as you can. Yeah. But when the light bulb goes off, pay attention to the light and 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 keep it on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of that innocence. Mm. I yeah. Hate, I hate yeah. It. I love that. Yeah. And and what you got, Lens? mine would just be to um, you know, give yourself grace and space, you know. Sometimes it's hard to step away from the rat race and whatever, but I mean, you're going to come back even stronger and ready to go if you can just give yourself some grace and take space. You got one? I would just say, um, you know, and this is just hearing your um, your story. Uh, confront life with love. These obstacles might feel like they're forever or like just life changing, altering. You might be in a relationship that's great. Or be on a set that's awesome. And, you know, we love things to last forever. But when they do come to pass, you know, lead with love. And it'll make your transition into that thing that's better for you. It'll make it so much easier. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I'm going to say. I like that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my tip is um, if you're in a loving relationship, just pause before you start sharing it all over social media (sighs) and with the world. Like, do you really need comments from strangers Strangers. on your personal, intimate, beautiful partnership and love? Like, you know, the occasional Instagram post, sure. But if you're writing blog posts about your partner for the public- The longer it is, the worse it's going. Like, I mean, (laughs) just make it personal, (laughs) not public. That's the- point yeah. of these relationships yeah. yeah so you know what i mean just don't, check yourself don't force your boyfriend to freaking post about you if he doesn't okay. want to do it okay this is about oh. daniel's <laughs> personal life <laughs> yeah and don't oh I'm my God. Person. <laughs> dude homie i feel you so much dude. like it's like why didn't you comment why didn't you like it and i'm like because i don't go on instagram like yes. literally and you're ever. like because i see you in person and tell you i love I, you what are you yeah, talking about i just told you i like the sweater <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that shit. That's what I'm talking about. That bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't you celebrating me in public? It's like, what? <laughs> Judge me based on my actions with you. I don't want to um, be your dirty little secret. Anyway. Oh, oh that's what comes next. Oh, that's, th- oh, that's, next. that's, oh, that's, that's the thought? <laughs> Are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed? I'm just um, But anyway, um, I love so you great to meet so you, man. much. Dude. Yeah, and pleasure's I, on mine. It's uh, I can't wait. Uh, we we have to get next time I'm in LA. I, yes. We definitely have to hang out. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do I, lunch. Uh, yeah, every, everything. <laughs> yeah. I would drop lunch liter- is on like, you. Nothing. Yes. <laughs> 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 um, I can't wait to squeeze you again, though. We have he gives the best. Out. I know. I love you so much, Lindsay. And it's been way too long. Too we long, can't go long. more than a year. A I know. Year without I seeing agree. each other. Like, come on. Well, um, thanks for coming on. Thanks for watching, Nedheads. Check out Chris Zilka. Right, guys. You said you're not on social media too much? Whenever I'm taking a shit. Yeah, honey. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's check like out my Chris favorite thing to do while I poop. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, at Chris Zilka. Yeah, if cool. you want to. Yeah. Uh, we'll put yeah. it in there. Thanks. Um, love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye, Chris. Bye, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching this thank week's you. episode and thank you to our patrons. Our patrons. Yes. Patreon.com slash Ned's Pod. We are. love you. We do uh, bonus content, mm-hmm. live streams, and mm-hmm. you guys help keep this show mm-hmm. going. If you want to join, check us out. Yes. And big shout out to our super, super friends. Hey, hey. Hey. Super friends dance. Super friends dance. Super, super friends dance. dance. Super super friends dance. dance. Super and a big shout out to our super duper super friends. Super duper friends. Okay, we starting out with Legendary X, AK. Mm. And we got Rebecca Saletti. Let's go, Becca. And Eve. Eve. Thank you, guys. Eve. We love you. Super friends, Dan. Super friends. We'll see you on super the live friends. stream. Thank super you, super friends. duper friends. Wagon uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Ned's Declassified Podcast Survival Guide. And if you guys want clips from the podcast, be sure to go check out the Ned's Pod Clips YouTube channel. We got a link in the description, so go ahead and click it. And if you want more exclusive bonus content, come on down to our Patreon. Oh, yeah, we'd love to have you. And the link to that is in the description, too. Peace.